Hey guys and welcome back to the third video on building this CNC machine. In this episode we're basically gonna be building the C axis and also building the tool head that goes into the C axis. So first let me show you guys what I have here. These are all the parts for the C axis. Basically this is the C carriage and on the C carriage I made it in a way that you can actually um, print different plates in order um, to mount your tools. So basically if I wanna mount a laser, I'll mount it to one of these um, plates and then that plate goes into this carriage. Um, the carriage has uh, spaces for bearings and also like the models before. Um, it has spaces for um, zip ties to hold the bearings also has some spaces for nuts here and here what we have is basically uh, the part that holds the nut for the threaded rod that we're going to be using and there we have basically the holes for the nuts and then we can put we can put nuts here and from this plate we can actually pass screws through and and hold the uh, this in place along with this one, with this um, C axis carriage. Now, this is my tool head. This is basically a drill from Banggood. It's basically a kind of high um, high speed motor that they sell that you can um, that they sell with a shaft and also a plate that you can mount it to certain places. They advertise it as um, a motor for a mini lathe so they they think that you can use it as a as the motor for a mini lathe but i don't think so however it works very well as a small um drill it works for as a tool head for like drilling and um carving and so on uh, for cnc machines some people have used them for a wood and also PCBs and they said that it works so I got it for for because of that it was like 15 bucks so that's what I got it I got it just from Banggood however Calvin from Make It With Calvin he recommended me another motor that, were, that was way bigger than this one so if this one doesn't work I'll get another one that is way bigger and way, way beefier I assume I'm gonna be able to take this motor and connected to a solid state relay and from there I can control it from the Arduino in the in the machine which hopefully works there is a pain that sends a high signal when you enable the, the spindle on g-code which should work these other parts are basically if you guys remember these are the parts that go on the x-axis these were made in order to pass through uh one of these threaded rods and you can pass it through put nuts on each side and then from there you can take uh, let me move some of this stuff here this plate mounted in here um and then put a lock nut here a lock nut here then take this other place so the plate and mount it there and then lock nuts on here and here and then uh, normal nuts here to hold it in place now the other one goes over here and then the rods go basically in here so we're gonna have two rods and then two threaded rods now these threaded rods are gonna be able to keep the whole plate in place and then um these also these rods are gonna help it al align itself so it's not gonna go anywhere and then before i put these two rods in place these eight millimeter rods um, i'm gonna put the pop the bearings in there and then from there i can um put this plate and zip tie, zip tie the bearings to it and then it will basically uh, move smoothly after that um, which is pretty good uh, this motor is also missing uh, a coupler 
that is gonna have the that is gonna hold the trailer rod in place, which I think I have somewhere else. I don't remember where, or I might have to cut another one. And that is gonna help this C carriage move up and down with this tool in place. Um, so that's basically the <laughs> the idea. So let me go and put everything here together and from there we're gonna go and um, test it out and see if it works I don't know if I'm gonna be able to wire this motor right now but I guess we can try so I'll be right back okay so now it's been about four days and we're back as you can see everything is assembled already it was it was complicated to assemble it was really complicated to assemble mostly because i was dumb enough to like put some parts where i it was like extremely hard to reach when some other parts were already assembled so for example you remember that there was a part back here that holds uh, a nut and that part um if i removed it assemble everything and then try to put that one back it, it was impossible so i basically had to disassemble some parts and then put it in and then it, it was a mess it was really just a mess um so if i were to make an assembly guide of this printer it will be uh first attaching the tool then attaching everything in the c-axis then everything on the x-axis and then um, this whole part and then the y-axis because it was it was just a complete nightmare if you can see I don't know if you can see uh, let me try to move my camera that module up there it's uh, one of these um, DC to, to DC um, solid state relays that you can buy and that I'm using for the motor and that I'm connecting to the board and there is a bug in gerbil control or the, the actual CNC board that I have which is that if you enable the, the spindle control what happens is that there is actually a pin that is supposed to have um, the spindle control it just doesn't work um, it's always giving you 5 volts when it's supposed to vary the voltage depending on the on the PWM that you give it. So what happens is that when you change something in the in Gerwald to use a motor, the pin to control the SSR is actually the pin that you use for the maximum end stop, which is really stupid. Um, because whoever was designing this board uh, use a PWM pin to connect the the C plus and stuff but anyways um, it's already everything assembled uh, excuse my rant my motor that I bought from Banggood is installed um, they sell it with a bracket here and so I decided just to install that bracket and just leave it like that uh, I made this pacer board so I can um, install this bracket right away in there and if i want to switch the tool i just have to basically switch um this this bracket there let's see uh this part uh the trailer rub with the lock nuts were kind of annoying to put together but after you put it together and you make sure that, it, that everything is aligned it's actually pretty good it's it's like rock solid there it's really really rock solid I have a coupler that is 3D printed because I wanted to have a, a, a rigid coupler and the reason for that is because if you use a flexible coupler what's going to happen is that first of all because my motor is on top and my uh, whatever I wanted to hold from there is on the bottom what's going to happen is that um, it's going to always be expanded the spring is always going to be expanded but when i'm trying to cut something where it has to like go down something like for example you have a, a piece of let's say cardboard and you're trying to mill 
the the first resistance it's gonna have it's gonna push the the spring upwards and then it, you're gonna basically have a mess and it's gonna be springing around and it's it's not gonna be good so it's, be, it's better to use optis couplers in order instead of the the flexible ones for for just for that um, if you have other accesses then also you can use um, those so you don't get any shaking on your axis um, for 3D printers it's good because um, all the weight is pushing down on the coupler so it doesn't spring down. It also um, reduces a lot of uh, artifacts in, in, in your prints, but I guess whenever it works properly. Another thing that I noticed is the fact that there is a huge gap like between this um, point in here and the back, there is a huge gap. and uh that's kind of annoying because that means that i cannot use my whole uh space here if i turn off uh, if i turn it off um you can see that i can go way back here well actually i can go way more i can go here but if i try to go forwards then it's just gonna be all the way up to here that doesn't matter that much because one of these little plates, let's say uh, the bias is here, it's gonna be basically here, so it's gonna have more than enough space. And even if I get a bigger one, it's just gonna be mostly like from here to here, here to here. It's not gonna be that that bad, but it's something that is annoying. But at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because um, I'm gonna have a part of the device is gonna be here and another one is gonna be here so I'm never gonna be able to really cut at the back back of the of the bed neither at the front front I'm just gonna so it's gonna be basically this space it's kind of annoying but I mean it, it is what it is um, it's part of the design of this um, CNC for some reason I didn't calculate that so I guess that's what I get for that what else there is a problem with this power supply and it's the fact that it doesn't have a fan so whenever I run the motor and it, the transistors get too hot and then they just um, shut off and for and then when they shut off basically this shut off so what I did was basically to install a, a fan at the back so it can blow some air so it, they don't shut off I'm gonna be using a, a separate power supply for this one and maybe for the for another thing that we have in the future that's gonna be attached to this. But uh, let's test it out and see what happens. Uh, I have some Jico that I already made, so I just wanna show you guys what happens when I run it. So this is uh, the old Jico that we used in the other episodes. Uh, but it's tweaked so it can work with the with the motor and also with the c-axis so here we go let me turn the fan on at the back uh, where's, the, where's the switch so what it's doing is basically just going through all the to all the parts that we had before but now it's going from from this the digital zero that i put in on um 50 millimeters down and before it goes 50 millimeters down it turns on the spindle and when it reaches to the lowest part it shuts it off and then goes back um, and it does that for all the points so it goes to the point then turns on the motor goes down then when it goes down it's gonna shut it off and then go up and it's basically gonna do that for every point the c-axis is not a, it's not that bad actually it doesn't make any loud noises it it moves smoothly it's not twister um, what I was most concerned about was the threaded rod, if it was bent or, or anything. But it seems to be pretty good, it's not jumpy or anything. Which has actually happened to me before, but I had a really bad threaded rod and it just messed up my C-axis. 
This seems to be working fine. Should be almost done. Now it's at the back. So this is the maximum to the back that it's gonna be able to go. Which is the closest to the to the front basically. Well this is working. Um, let me just show you guys uh, the end stops have not arrived yet. It's been about 10 days since I ordered them and they have yet to arrive which is annoying as hell. Uh, I'm gonna put a bad review on that seller because the shipping is just terrible. It just, it's just horrible. Uh, but that should allow me to basically have a, um, the, the machine basically know where it is in space at any point and so on. But anyways, that was about it. We're gonna be doing the next video is basically one, um, setting up the device to maybe set up another attachment that I have around and three, um, try and see if I can get another power supply that it can help this one as well. So I can have this one so only for the uh, step of motors and then for this one I can have another more powerful power supply. I'm thinking about uh, either just going with a ATX power supply that I have around that has a 12 volt 13 amp line or just going with buying a uh, uh, 24 volt 10 amp power supply and from there um, it's just basically gonna it, it can't complain just can't can't do anything but yeah that's about it for this video thank you guys for watching and stay tuned because this is basically almost done this is like 90% done already